Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Hout Baileron here in Farm Simulator 22 with me Sea Wally. It is the start of a new morning. The uh, stone picker is off and running doing the uh, stone collection on our uh, final field of our three starting fields. I am now going to be doing um, seeding. So, we need to go get the cedar from the store. Go pick that up. Bring it back to the farm. Load it up with the fertilizer. Um, and then, load it up with seed. From there, what we will do after that is we'll get the field seeded we'll start with the two with the two fields that are completely done the stone fit the field that the stone picker is currently operating on we will then seed last and i am going to go with my plan that i've um talked about in the last videos um in that i'm going to plant grass on that field just to give us something a little bit more um, give us some um, chances to make some income throughout the year um, by mowing grass, being able to do silage, being able to do um, tedding, that kind of stuff. We might also get rid of the silo today from the farm. We might sell that, knock it down, because uh, it's not doing anything. <laughs> this first year because we don't have any crops to put in it so I might as well get the money back for that um, one of the things I'm gonna have to look at doing is maybe getting rid of the least equipment certainly the least equipment and possibly this least tractor because as I suspected and talked about the other day in the video um, leasing fees and rental fees for equipment have changed m massively from FS19 to FS22. Whereas in FS19, it was perfectly feasible for you to run a farm on entirely leased equipment because you would only pay a very nominal daily leasing fee and then you would only be charged when you used equipment. So if the equipment was just stood in a shed doing nothing, you didn't pay for it. Um, however, in 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 FS22, it seems like when you go into the store and you go to say Lisa P, you go to Lisa. So this tractor, this massive Ferguson, is going to cost me six thousand two hundred and twenty-two pounds to lease. Um, I will be charged six thousand two hundred and twenty-two pounds every single day whilst I have that machine. So if I if I lease the machine and don't return it on the same day, um yeah, it gets very expensive. Um I'm sure I could come up with a a a, a interesting little uh way of being able to do it in game. Offer some uh, role playing um mechanic or come up with something that I can use to work around that and uh, get back to um, how it kind of how it was in Farm Sim 19 because I, I feel like in New Farmer when you first start on the map in New Farmer mode or even like start from scratch when you have such limited money available to you you're going to want to um, you're going to want to be able to um, lease equipment you're going to need obviously as you've already seen on this map we've needed multiple tools right out of the gate from day one to get these fields prepped and ready for seeding that we did not have in our initial starting equipment so i've had to lease equipment i've had to get that equipment i can't buy it because we d we only started with a hundred thousand in the bank account um so normally you would just go oh i'll just lease first year i'll lease everything it will be cheaper than buying it i can get i can get the i can get the work done um that's perfectly fine um it, 
yeah, it doesn't work in FS22. Leasing, I think leasing is something that you can do later on down the line when you've got a farm established and you've got plenty of money and you just want something, you know, you want some piece of equipment to just do a job one day. Like suddenly if you've got a big field that needs cultivating, you might say to yourself, you know what, I'm just going to go and lease a big cultivator for today just so I can do this field quickly and uh, we will move on from there sort of thing. Um, what I don't think is, I don't think leasing long term is viable in season in, in, in FS22 um, because of the charge you're getting each and every single day for that machine. It's basically, basically, if you were to go into the store and say, you know, I'm going to lease this. It's basically you are leasing this vehicle every single day. So if every single, you know, if you lease this vehicle on day one, returned it on day one, then leased it on day two, returned it on day two, leased it on day three, returned it on day three. That's pretty much how the leasing system in game works. Even if you're not returning the equipment yourself each day, you're basically being charged again for it every morning. Um, as if you were leasing the item again each day and having a new item every single day. So, yeah, you've got to keep your eye on that. Because <laughs> that will plunge you into financial ruin very, very quickly. Um, I'm afraid. If, you, if you're not on top of it and not in control of it. Especially if you've leased lots of... I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I've only leased one tractor. Because obviously tractors are expensive. Tractors are the big thing that are going to be um, sinking a lot of money. On other saves um, that I have got started, like the one from my, um, day one, my day one live stream on Twitch... Uh, the, the, the stream I started on there, I've tested by fast forwarding a couple of days, skipping ahead a few days on that map. And because all the equipment on that map is leased, my harvester, my tractors, um, all my cedars, my plows, everything. I don't own a single item of equipment on that save. Literally every single day I'm paying about 80 grand in leasing fees <laughs> so when you start on day one with a hundred grand and you spend 80 grand leasing everything that leaves you with 20 grand in your bank account on day two when you get charged 80 grand for all your leased equipment suddenly you are minus 60 grand in debt on day three when you get charged 80 grand for all your leased equipment um you're minus 140 grand in debt. <laughs> and so it goes. Um, so yeah, people are... Uh, uh, need to understand the finances of the game. People also need to realise... Uh, one of the things I've, I've been seeing already on the Steam... On a lot of forums, Steam forums, Giants forums... Especially the Giants forums where there's lots of people complaining. Is the growth time. Lots of people are complaining about how long it takes the crops to grow. In FS22. And that, you know, if you have, look at the crop calendar. You know, if I planting wheat, barley and canola. It's going to be 10, it's going to take 10 months for me. Um, to be able to harvest those crops. If I'm playing on one day a month one one game day equals a month um i've got to i've got to skip ahead 10 days in game um before i can harvest and what a lot of people and i think what a lot of people are doing a lot of people are trying to play farming simulator 22 in the way that vanilla farming simulator 19 was played how you played farming simulator 19 if you didn't have the seasons mod you didn't have anything that changed and made the growth cycles and crop cycles more realistic um people are still in this mindset if you like that they they expect to be able to plant a crop in the morning 
on a mat and be able to harvest it the same day later that day. That was possible in FS19 because of the fact that FS19 was a bit arcadey, was maybe less simulator. It was the, there was less of the simulator aspect in Farming Simulator 19. And you could set the crop, you could control crop growth speed in the game settings. You could set it to fast and you were quite capable of planting a crop in the morning and harvesting it later that day because the crop would, ch ch you know, the crop would go for a growth cycle every few in-game hours. Now in FS22, crops only go through a growth cycle once per month. So... Depending how many days you have per month determines how many days you need to skip to get a, 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 a growth period. Obviously, the more days you have in a month, uh, the longer it's going to take crops to grow because you're not going to be advancing months very quickly. And a lot of people are complaining about this. A lot of people are saying they want the old fast growth speed thing back. There's also people complaining that you can't turn off crop withering. And people are complaining that, oh, the crops keep withering and dying. Well, I don't have so much of a sympathy for those people. Because my theory is, why go to the trouble of planting a crop and growing a crop if you're not going to bother harvesting it? You know? <laughs> when the harvest, when, when, when the crop comes up for harvesting, you should be downing at whatever else you are doing and... Um, getting focusing on the harvest jumping on the harvest and getting the harvest in that becomes your priority on a map your harvest stop whatever else you're playing around with and mucking around with and get on with the harvesting if you've kind of overextended yourself early in the game and you've got loads of fields that all need harvesting at the same time and you don't have a lot of equipment you don't have a lot of harvesters you don't have a lot of tractors and trailers to do the carting that just comes down to bad management, really, on your part. That's not a fault with the game, and certainly not a reason why Giants should re-enable the ability to turn off crop withering or whatever. I definitely see Farm Sim 22 as being a transition game. People have always... I mean, a large, large number of the Farming Simulator community has complained in previous games that... The main, the, the main gameplay, your crops, your field work, all that sort of stuff, is not very realistic. It's very simple. It's very arcade-like. It's unrealistic. And a lot of people have obviously, since Farming Simulator 17, have been asking and demanding that Giants make seasons part of the base game. Uh, you know, put it in the game from day one. We don't want it, you know, instead of it being a mod, let's make it part of the game because it makes the game more realistic. Now, I've always been kind of on the fence about that because, you know, for me, Seasons is a bit like Marmite. You love it or you hate it. You can take it or you can leave it. I, in single player, playing around like this, don't mind Seasons. I've played with it in FS19. I've played without it in FS19. For me, it doesn't bother me in the slightest whether I have it on or off. Um, I, I I adjust to it and I, I can I can I can play the game either way. I sometimes have felt in like multiplayer that um seasons is a bit more problematic because there is obviously an issue whereby if you are the server admin and you're running your farm. The less experienced farm sim players, or the people who perhaps don't normally play with seasons, suddenly become um, a bit of a, I, want, I don't want to say a nuisance, because that's obviously bad, but they are constantly asking all the time what they should be doing. What, what should I do? What can I do? Um, and at certain times of the year, it, certainly in Farming Simulator 19, in the summer and the winter, when there isn't a lot of actual jobs you can do, um, in the winter in Farming Simulator 19, in seasons, you'd be completely frozen out of your fields. 
Uh, as soon as you got to winter, you couldn't do any field work because you'd get a message saying the ground is frozen. Um, so you should tend to your animals or maybe consider forestry. And then obviously in the summer, when the crops are growing in between the seeding period and the harvest period, it's pretty much a case of, well, if you've got grass fields, now's the time to do your grass mowing, do your hay, produce your hay and stuff. And if you didn't have a lot of grass and you didn't have a, a lot of mowing to do, the summer months were kind of like, hmm, a bit thumb twiddly. And again, pe players would be stood around going, what can I do? What should I do? Um, especially as like the contract system was a little bit um, more restricted, if you like, in um, FS19. Again, in seasons previously, in FS19, in, in, in Farming Simulator 19, your planting season would always be at the, at the start of the year in the spring. All your crops would be planted in the spring. They'd all be harvested in the autumn. Okay? So you'd have all the green bars down the left side of the screen. You'd have all your orange, bar orange bars three quarters of the way um, through the calendar. So everything was planted at the same time. Everything was harvested at the same time. As you can see in FS22 with the way Giants have implemented it, there is a little bit of a variance. You know, there is crop that can be planted at slightly different times. Harvesting window is a little bit different. It's a little bit more spread out. So you do have, there's less gaps. There's less gaps where you're not doing anything, basically. So you're, 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 you're able to do more throughout the year. There's more periods of time where you can do field work and stuff. Because of that, the side effect of that is that when you get the contract system, and I also am one of the people on the Giants forums that's asking if the contracts, this contract screen could be moved and put below the, so you go map, contracts, AI worker. I think that would make more sense. But because of the crop cycle in fs22 compared to seasons mod in fs19 and 17 you do get a variety of contracts available so there's you know sowing contracts there's harvesting contracts that was never possible in um farming simulator 19 or farming simulator 17 with the seasons mod because everything would be the same so you would have you know in the summer you would have all fertilizing contracts and uh, weed spraying contracts. Those would be the only contract you would have available throughout the whole summer. You would never see anything but fertilizing contracts. That was your only option. In the autumn, everything would be harvesting contracts. In the spring, it would be plowing, cultivating, sowing contracts. Um, so you can see it, it, it made it very, um, very repetitive, shall we say, um, and, and a little bit bland. Whereas at least the way Giants have tried to implement the season cycle, you still have variety of things to do. You still have that variety. Um, if I want to go do a harvest contract, I can go do a harvest contract. If I want to go do a plowing contract, I can go do a plowing contract. The game does not stop me from doing that because, you know, crops are planted and grown at different times of the year. I think what a lot of players are doing, though, and where the mistake is being made is a lot of players are just so focused on the crops that they're literally complaining that they're planting their crops and then they're having to fast forward, you know, 10 days or more to get to harvest their crops and then they're complaining about losing all the money from the um, maintenance, daily maintenance fees and um, leasing fees and things like that and it's like I, I don't think Giants intended peop for people just to skip and sleep through half the year you know once you finish planting your fields 
I think the I think the idea is that you go up on around the map and start doing other things. You know, whilst you're waiting for your crops to grow, you should then be doing other things each day, like contracts, like productions, logging, animals, you know. And I think that's where people are getting a little bit, you know, they're getting a little bit too t narrow vision, tunnel visioned, just on their own fields. They're not looking at the bigger picture of the whole map and the, the, the different tasks and activities around the map and the fact that you can generate money and earn income every single day at this point. You know, if you go, like say, once I've seeded my three fields, I'm done. and I don't need to touch these fields until I'm ready to harvest. So at that point, I'll turn my I'll be turning my attention to contracts and I'll be taking part in I'll be taking on contracts every single day. Whatever contracts are available each day, we'll start smashing our way through those. We'll we'll hammer out all the fertilizing contracts. We'll go and hammer out any plowing, cultivating contracts. Um harvesting contracts yes we can go and nail that i've still got my harvester if i'd sold the harvester that might be a little bit tricky um i have installed the mod on the mod hub that came out yesterday which is the collect straw at missions mod which was obviously a mod that was very useful in farming simulator 19 that allowed you to collect straw whilst doing harvest contracts for the crops that produce straw wheat barley oats so although some of the harvest contracts are bugged and i have mentioned this that they don't actually complete correctly even after you've harvested all the crop delivered all the crop um you can still actually earn money and make money from those contracts by collecting the straw and selling the straw so that's probably what i'm going to do I, if i'm doing any harvest contracts and it's for the crops that have straw the option for straw i'm going to collect the straw from the contracts just to increase my profitability um, i also need to get though uh once mr rock picker man has finished rock picking i i think he stopped actually looking at that it would appear. Um, go and check, Mister. Yeah, he has. Mister. Rock picker man. It's because I've got the front loader on, isn't it? The front loader adds to the collision of the tractor, so the AI worker sees a tree in front of him and doesn't get as close to it as he would if the front loader wasn't attacked i probably should have took the front loader off in all fairness um, i got stuck slow down mr ai driver um i did get completely um completely uh launched the other night <laughs> playing when i was doing my um when i was doing my video on all the different game hidden game settings and tweaking game settings and stuff um i got comp at one point when i was driving around trying to show people how to do the um turn off the magic circle the crop um circle of death thing i got hit by one of the ai cars and it absolutely launched my Fent tractor. <laughs> absolutely launched it. The tractor finished up on its roof, and that was it. Game over. Because I couldn't, I couldn't tip it back onto its wheels. At that point. Um, so, yeah, not not great. <laughs> But 
but there we go we have a crop seeded ladies and gentlemen we have gone from having crop on this field ready to harvest we have harvested we've lined we've plowed we've stone collected we've seeded we've weeded you know all is good right next crop is going to be my canola my, 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 my canola my, 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 my canola I've got my beacons on and my little collector's edition beacon which is on the shelf next to me is flashing away it's flashing away quite happily but yeah it's definitely it's obviously definitely going to take a little bit of a time a little bit of time for people to adjust to the new way of working in fs22 you know i don't necessarily think giants are likely to completely undo everything they've done in fs22 and put the gameplay back to how it was in fs19 i just don't think that's going to be a thing i think giants are making a conscious decision to move the game a little bit more towards simulation rather than arcade so all the people that have got used to the casual the absolute casual gameplay in the past are just gonna have to learn to deal and cope with the new season stuff you know the, i'm happy that giants have put in a version of seasons that is accessible to everybody and it has a you know it has a learning curve but it's not overwhelming um you know i think if if giants had implemented seasons in the way that the seasons mod did seasons with all the detail and depth that the seasons mod did things i think that would be more jarring and alienating for the casual player of the series at least this this i kind of see this as a halfway step by giants to transition people this is fs22 is the transition game that's going to move the players from the old fs games towards something else in the future like i say if giants are going to get more simulatory in the future in future versions of the game then this is going to help players make that transition and that change and share it's it's human nature to dislike change people do not like change as human beings we hate when pe somebody comes along and changes stuff and makes us do things differently to how we've always done things but i certainly disagree with comments i've been reading where people are like oh this game's going to be dead in a couple of weeks in a couple of months if giants don't put the old growth um, speed options back in and don't allow us to disable withering blah 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 this game's not going to be dead in a few weeks or a few months this game's going to go from strength to strength and get even more um adoption i would say going forward and like i say it's just going to take time once the game's been out for a couple of weeks and a couple of months players who are complaining now will have adapted and adjusted to it and it will become second nature you know everything will be second nature you know it's just a case of getting used to the changes and the differences um we will do that we will be quite capable of that we you know we'll learn sure some people learn a little bit slower than others but you know ultimately this is a game that you you're not meant to complete it on day one there is no completing farming simulator okay this game is one of those games that you can play for many hundreds and thousands of hours and even after that time you can still learn new things you know even up until the end of farming simulator 19 
I was still occasionally learning new things, new ways of doing things, um, different, you know, options and different approaches to things. So, yeah, it's just one of those things. It's a new game, it's a new model, it's a new style, there's new options, and people just have to get used to it, you know? The funny, the funny thing is, before the game released, everybody was complaining how the game was just copy and paste Farming Simulator 19, and all the negative comments was that there was no difference. Farming, there's no difference between Farming Simulator 22 and Farming Simulator 19. Why are giants charging me another 40 quid when it's just basically a patch and an update to Farming Simulator 19? Blah blah blah. It's basically a DLC. You know, we had, we put up with all those comments and all that negativity. Now Farming Simulator 22 has come out. Those people that were claiming that the game was no different are now complaining that the game's changed too much. <laughs> and they want all the old options back. Um, so what is it, people? You know, make your minds up, people. Is there no difference between Farming Simulator and Farming Simulator 19? Or has the game changed too much? You can't you can't make both arguments. They contradict each other. <laughs> you know? They're kind of contradicting statements. I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and be critical of the season cycle, the season cycle, the crop growth cycle, or anything like that. Definitely not. I have, I have no issue with that in the game. It's one of the, it's something that, like I say, once I, once I've learnt it, once I understand it, and you know, I'll be used to it, and I'll be able to carry on as I as I always have done in the game. The thing that I'm going to be critical about is some of the bugs and some of the issues. Um, you know, like the harvest contracts not completing. Like, not being able to zoom in and out of... zoom in and out your camera if you happen to be driving a vehicle that has a, a manual ga gearbox. Um, even if you have the gear change options set to automatic in the option screen in the game settings it still changes gear when you're in a manual gearbox tractor so like if i was driving that Valtra, which has a uh, has the option for manual gears even though i've got it's the gears set to automatic in the game settings if i try to zoom in and out whilst driving the Valtra. It's changing gears. That needs to be disabled ASAP. Because although I'm playing on PC, I am playing with controller. I do not want to have to touch any buttons on the keyboard ever while I'm playing this game. And obviously in the next few days, next few weeks, when I get my wheel set up and I start configuring my steering wheel for the game, and I transition over to playing Farming Simulator with my wheel, I, I don't expect to have the same issues, you know. I, I hope that's fixed. I hope there's a way we can zoom in and out without, you know, changing gears, you know. Or if we're driving a manual gearbox tractor, we can zoom in and out whilst driving. <laughs> Giants need to find some way to implement that for controller and wheel users. But then there's other things as well that, like, say, Giants maybe need to tweak and update in patches. One thing I have noticed, and again, maybe it's, again, I, I don't know whether it's something I'm, I'm missing or I'm overlooking. But whenever you load into the game, um, um, we'll go to the wardrobe feature. 
Every time you load into the game, your character name gets changed. And it gets changed to whatever your Windows user name is. Um, so if I, I don't like Chris, I absolutely hate that. It should be C Wadi Isa. And I can set that now, and that'll be fine whilst I'm playing the game. The minute I save and exit the game, the next time I reload it, why has my character farmer why has my um farmer's name changed again? So canola is seeded, canoda, canola is going in. Like I say, we will be doing grass on the other field. And we'll be able to start tackling contracts. So what I'm going to do, folks, I'm going to carry on. I'm going to get this canola seeded and planted. As soon as the uh, stone picker man has finished picking up all his stones... Um, I'll, I'll head over there quite quickly and I'll also get the grass planted. Um, when you come back, when we come back in the next episode, I'll uh, get the stone material. Um, we'll get that collected up, put in the trailer and we'll take that off and get that disposed of on the map. Um, and then we'll start, we'll have a look and see what contracts are available to us and... Um, how we can uh, start to maybe earn a little bit of money because apart from like i say selling vehicles and equipment and a little bit of wheat that we harvested on day one and finding a couple of collectibles that has been the only way i've made any money thus far and that's not going to be obviously financially very viable for us going forward I would ideally like to make enough money that I could maybe buy the field next to me, the, the two fields next to me, the one with the sunflowers on it and the one here with the soybeans on it. I would like to be able to buy those fields before they are ready to harvest so I can harvest those fields and get the, um, get the money for the crop that is currently planted on them. Obviously, the, the, yield, the yields won't be high on those two fields. Because they've, they're they currently AI controlled, which means they haven't been ploughed, they haven't been lined, they haven't been fertilised, and they haven't been weeded. But at least I'll be getting some money straight away after buying the fields. If I can get those fields before they are harvested. So we may have to smash out a load of contracts very, very quickly on the map around do a whole bunch of contracts and try and get enough money that i can buy and expand into those buy and expand to those two fields i think that would be nice because then we'd have four fields that we can rotate crops on throughout the um the year and we would have um obviously our grass field then over there that would give us a great base from that point i think four crop harvests four actual crop harvests a year grass a couple of times a year would give us an option or the opportunity to be able to make some good money i think some good money yeah i'm pleased i didn't weed this bit then because um the weeds are getting removed as I'm seeding anyway, so happy days. There's a little bit there I've missed of the field on the right hand side. I will come and pick that up afterwards.
so I'm going to carry on. I'm going to get these fields seeded. The rock picker is going to finish collecting his rocks. Um, I will see you all in the next episode of the series, everybody. Thank you for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll be back again with the next episode very, very soon. But for now, if you would be so kind as to click that like button for me if you've not already done so. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already doing so. And leave a comment in the comment section down below. It all feeds the algorithm. That hungry YouTube algorithm. And um, yeah, it's just a nice way for you guys to say thanks. Thanks for uh, making this video and entertaining you for, you know, a few moments. So... I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. For now, here on Hout Baylor On, it is goodbye from me. I'll see you all soon.